Good morning, everyone. My name is Federico, and I'm going to talk about the eighth chapter of the book Steel Metallurgy, developed by Drs. Boniardi and Casaroli. The chapter is called Steel Microstructures. In a generic steel, there is always a temperature where the microstructure is austenitic. If subjected to a slow equilibrium cooling, austenite transforms into what already seen in previous slides. Instead, in case of non-equilibrium cooling, austenite transforms into perlite, bainite and or martensite if steel is eutectoid, into ferrite, perlite, bainite and or martensite if steel is hypotectoid, cementite, perlite, bainite and or martensite if steel is hyperotectoid. It is possible to make a distinction between equilibrium microstructures like ferrite, perlite and cementite and non-equilibrium microstructures like bainite and martensite, bearing in mind that certain microstructures can be both equilibrium or not. Steel microstructures can be also divided in microstructures formed by austenites through nucleation and growth mechanism due to carbon diffusion or without carbon diffusion. Consider now the microstructures formed through nucleation and growth from austenite due to carbon diffusion. There is a general rule. The more nucleation is favored, the more the final microstructure is fine-grained, like at the top on the right. On the other hand, the more growth is favored, the more the final microstructure is coarse-grained, like at the bottom on the right here. One of the main important parameters of transformation through nucleation and growth is the temperature. At high temperature, the growth is dominant, giving a coarser final microstructure. Instead, when temperature decreases, nucleation predominates, giving a finer final microstructure. Remember that both nucleation and growth increase when temperature decreases. What is important is whether one or the other predominant. Pure light is formed from austenite when, as provided by iron carbon phase diagram or by TTC, TTT or CCT diagrams, gamma phase must transform into alpha phase and iron carbide phase. When the transformation for, from gamma phase to alpha phase occurs, carbon solubility is reduced drastically and at the end there is the concentration of carbon in several areas lamella of iron carbide phase and the impoverishment of carbon in other areas, lamella of alpha phase. At high temperatures there is a large scale carbon diffusion and the lamella of iron carbide phase and alpha phase have a larger size with a final microstructure consisting of coarse perlite colonies that develop from the grain boundaries of the homogeneous crystals of gamma phase. The opposite happens with low temperatures. And here there is the representation of what just said. If we consider the transformation of a single grain of austenite, we see that if nucleation is favored, many small perlite colonies, so fine microstructure, are formed. Instead, if growth is growth is favored, only a few perlite colonies with a large lamella, coarse microstructure, are formed. Moreover, the more the lamellar microstructure is fine, the greater is the hardness, and we can see here, typically around from 200 to 350 weekends hardness. On the top, we see that perlite has the shape of dark grey in regular grains, and only with larger magnification, like below, here, it is possible to distinguish the lamelle of alpha phase and the lamelle of iron carbide phase. The perlitic microstructure is usually fragmented with ferritic grains, hypotectoid steels, or cementite plates in hyper eutectoid steel. Focus now on ferrite. For a generic hypo hypotectoid steel, before the perlitic transformation occurs, gamma phase forms homogeneous grains of alpha phase, so ferrite. Ferrite nucleates on the grain boundary of the austenitic crystal, crystals, and it grows both along the grain boundaries and within the austenite grains. In hypo eutectoid steel, ferrite grows in combination with perlite, and it has a very low carbon content. 
lower than 0.02%. The grains present in regular shapes and they can be equiaxed or arranged along maximum deformation direction. Ferrite has a white or light grey color and in hypoheotectoid steel it is also, pos it is also possible to observe an a a secular needle like ferrite called Widmanstatten ferrite. This. On the top is shown a homogeneously distributed microstructure of perlite and ferrite, while below a microstructure <coughs> where ferrite is predominantly along the grain boundary of perlite. Cementite. Hyperotectoid steels form plates of iron carbide phase on the grain boundaries of austenitic grains, cementite, before gamma phase transforms into perlite and the new phase proceeds through nucleation and growth. Also in this case, cementite is present in combination with perlite. Bainite. It consists in very fine aggregate of alpha phase and iron carbide phase, both with an acicular morphology. Form at temperatures between 250 and 550 Celsius degrees under non equilibrium conditions. The transformation of phosphonite into bainite occurs through nucleation and growth and is governed by the carbon diffusion. Bainite presents great hardness values, typically in the range between 300 and 650 Vicar hardness. Distinction between upper and lower bainite is related to the transformation temperature. In upper bainite, we find the length of alpha phase and a secular plate of iron carbide phase orientated in the same direction, while in the case of lower bainite, the mobility of carbon is further limited and the length of alpha phase are finer than the previous case, with plates of iron carbide tilted at approximately 60 degrees with respect to the lat axis. It is not easy to observe the length of alpha phase and the secular plates of iron carbide phase under a metallography microscope, and the bainitic microstructure can be discriminated from the others only through scanning electron micros microscope, like shown here. Martensite is obtained by instantaneous transformation of the austenite lattice due to the rapid to a rapid cooling without diffusion phenomena. Martensite is formed during the transformation of the FCC lattice of gamma phase into the BCC lattice of alpha phase and the microstructure as a body-centered tetragonal lattice called BCT called or alpha forced with the same chemical composition of austenite. Like it's possible to read here. At high temperature, austenite is stable and the dissolved carbon occupies the interstitial sites of the FCC lattice of gamma phase. Instead, in case of high cooling rates, carbon remains trapped in the FCC lattice of gamma phase, which turns into BCT lattice of martensite, a body center cubic lattice elongated along one of the three directions, that is, with one of the axes of the cube larger than the other two axes. Let's see the Bain's theory to explain the martensitic transformation. If we consider two adjacent FCC cells gamma phase, having a lattice constant alpha A gamma, <coughs> carbon atoms are dissolved within the lattice in correspondence of the octahedral interstitial site, and we notice that BCT cell of martensite is already present within the original FCC lattice with the following parameters this and this one, with carbon atoms arranged along the major edges. When FCC cell of austenite cools down, it is transformed into BCT cell of martensite, and this later cell underwent a 20% contraction along the major edge and a 12% dilatation of the two minor edges. And martensite transformations always produce an increase of volume of about 4.5%. In general, the greater the amount of carbon, the greater the lattice distortion. The hardness of martensite is high, between 400 and 800 hardness weakens, and it is only a function of the carbon content. Martensite presents an acicular morphology for carbon contents lower